In this video, I'll show you how I'm going to create test panels for an upcoming project. The customer's got a bus that he has converted into an RV. It's got a really nice paint job on it. And then he decided he wanted to put some flames on it. And so he had me do some computer designs and some mock-ups. And now we're to the point where he wants to see test panels of different colors. So these are the test panels. We just used some scrap metal laying over at the body shop and we did the base coat. He sent me a sample of the base coat that's already on there. So we base coated it, we clear coated these. And so up next, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna paint some flames on here. The first thing I wanna show you though, is what this color actually looks like. So I've got some wax and grease remover here. Whenever, whenever you're working on sanded clear coat, it turns cloudy because when you sand it, but if you wanna see what the base coat really looks like, if you get it wet with something like wax and grease remover, you can see it's a really nice blue color with a good, um, kind of a small flake in it, but it's a beautiful color. So that's what it looks like. So I'm going to draw up in my Adobe Illustrator software a flame outline because he just wants ghost flames, which means it's airbrushed around the edges. And so I'm gonna, since I have to do, basically I think I have nine different colors I wanna test. I've, I've figured out and I measured how big it, to make it for each one. So I'll show you how I'm gonna use my plotter to kind of save myself some time. So over here at my computer, I've drawn up a flame. I normally do them a little bit longer and more elegant, but um, since this is for a test panel, I kind of made it a little bit wider and the flame edges a little bit wider because we're just gonna be looking at comparing colors when I send these panels to the customer. So that's why it looks a little bit kind of weird compared to sleek, cool looking flames. But um, anyway, I've got it to the size I need to fit all those parts over there, those test panel parts. And so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this in my software so I can cut nine copies of it. And then I will send it to my plotter and cut those out and show you how I'm gonna stick those on. So now I'm taking out the inside of the flames. This is called weeding out the vinyl. So I'll do that to the rest of them. Then I will also apply transfer tape which just holds everything in place. So I've got videos on how to do all this, how to use the software and how to use a plotter on airbrushuniversity.com. Okay, so I've got all these flame vinyl stencils that are taped in place. And so what I can do now is lift them up. Basically this is hinges. I've got my hinging masking tape. Pull this up. And I can lower it down. Since they're nice and flat surfaces, I can use one of these tools. I can also use a bondo spreader. So I'm gonna stick them all on like that and then I'll peel off the masking tape and then lift up one edge of the transfer tape and then peel off the transfer tape. And so that's what it's gonna be like. I will tape off the edges and then I can airbrush the edges of the flame here and give the guide several different samples of colors we could potentially use for the prod for the project. So this is why it's nice to have a plotter because typically when you do ghost flames you lay this out with eighth inch tape and you fill it on with tape but since this is just uh, practice test panels and they're all exactly the same I drew up one flame design in my computer and printed it all out, cut it all out like this and just saved so much time and each one's exactly the same. So that's just another good application of using a plotter. So next is going to be to actually airbrush these. And so I've ordered from Inspire Airbrush Paint, that's Inspire Solvent Paint, several different uh, metallic flakes. The customer wants these flames to shimmer in the light but not be very, very bright. So. Pretty much all the metallic flakes that they have. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint one of these colors for each one of these. So I've got shimmer blue, 
metal flake blue, spectra coat blue, sparkle pearl blue, base metallic blue, base pearls or, uh, oriental blue, and base pearls blue ocean. So go ahead and uh, spray out all these here. And then I've also, the customer did want to see some of this base coat with just some extra flake added to it and some of the extra pearl that's actually in the components of the paint itself. So. And these two will be painted in solidly. So I'll do those on the separate panels there. The rest of these will be done with an airbrush as ghost flames. Now I've got each one of these labeled with the appropriate paint that I'm going to use. I tried to group them together to where the more similar paints are closer to each other. So I've got them everything clearly labeled for me to follow as I airbrush it. But then I also, on the back of these, I kind of labeled what the paint is. So when the customer gets these, he can, we can communicate because um, he's several hundred miles from me. Um, we can talk about which color he likes clearly. So next I will go ahead and start uh, loading up my airbrushes with these different colors. And I'll come back and show you how I'm going to airbrush the uh, ghost flames. So the first color I'm going to try is this shimmer blue. I'm uh, using a 0.5 fluid nozzle in this airbrush because this flake is actually fairly thick, fairly large. definitely got a nice flake in it. I've got really good lighting in my studio here and I can see it shimmering really well. I'm going to let that flash off for probably about five minutes. I'll give it another coat. So it looks like adequate coverage. Whenever you're airbrushing graphics, everyone tends to, and I even tend to, miss the last few inches. So pay close attention that you don't forget to put plenty of paint up where the your graphics end. And down here at the bottom, I just want to make sure that I've got a nice little gradient that comes into the body of the flame about this far. So it's about an inch into the body of the flame. Up next will be the metal flake blue. I've already got that loaded in my airbrush. Once again, I'll use an airbrush with a fairly large 0.5 nozzle. Usually I use 0.35 as a good all around, but since these are metallics are fairly large, that's why I'm using a little bit larger diameter. Just as before, I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes and I'll give it a couple more coats. Next is base metallic blue.
so this this paint actually has more of a pigment to it rather the other first two were actually just more of a sparkle um, kind of like a, a shimmery pearl when like a I think a clear carrier of some sort this um, is more like a regular base coat and so it does not require as many coats but I will let this dry and I'll give it one more coat off camera This is a nice fine pearl. It's going to brush in really smoothly. I'll give it a few minutes to dry and I'll give it one more coat. Up next is Base Pearl's Blue Ocean. Up next is Spectracoat Blue. Just like before, I'll give it another coat off camera. Next color is called Sparkle Pearl Blue. So this one you can tell basically looks clear on this white surface, but if, when you look in the light here, you can see a really nice little, very fine shimmer, blue type color. So I'll uh, probably do two more coats off camera for this color. Now for the fun part, I'm just gonna unmask it and see how they look. Here's the results of our test panels. I've got them clear coated from the body shop. I've got them out here in the sun. And so up here first, the shimmer blue. Next is metallic flake blue. The one in the middle there is base metallic blue. This one the sun's on now is oriental blue. So some interesting effects as you shift the light, some of them almost disappear and then they really show up in different angles of the light. Up here is Spectracoat Blue. On the left. And then Sparkle Pearl Blue. That one's really cool, it's really subtle. And then I tested a few others that he wanted me to test um, that were uh, derivatives of the actual base coat of the paint job just by adding some more pearl to them. So he's going to come check these out tomorrow.